Let it begin. It's, it's an honor to be doing this, and, and I know you haven't given many interviews in your life. Can you start off by asking, telling me, you know, why, uh, why did you accept my, uh, I mean, I wrote you about 12 letters, but you finally on the 12th uh, talked to me. Why, why are you giving this interview? I mean, tell me why. Because it started it start to get to me after a while. Um, what, 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 I, I've always been conflicted about it, I guess, but I wasn't conscious of it until later, years later. Um, you know, at first I was just blown away by the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the chance, the, uh, the opportunity, the challenge of, of making this, this film. And, and, and I went into it like it was a regular film, like a, 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 another production of mine. Um, not thinking too much about uh, the long-term effects, the, 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 what it would mean uh, to, to society if, ever, if it was ever discovered. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 moon, the fake moon landing. Well, the rumors were true. Like, the moon landings were fake. Oh, wow. I was contacted by NASA. Okay, uh, uh, when, uh, when, where, why, I mean, what happened? In, be, uh, before I started making 2001, so in the mid-60s sometime. Um, after Kennedy said his thing, you're saying? Well, considerably after then, yeah. And, and uh, they had seen Dr. Strangelove, and uh, I had originally requested uh, uh, the use of the B-52 to film part of D, uh, Dr. Strangelove, and they refused. But they were very impressed by the, the final... Uh, mm, the, great film, I mean, great film. It's, it's one of my personal favorites. Yeah. They were very impressed by the look But of it. they wouldn't let you use a B-52 that you asked for, right? You asked no, they to would do. not. Why not? I mean, well then, so you have on Rocky. It was it Rocky? It's like, just force of habit, I think. They're just very secretive. Okay. And they in with the theme of... But, but yeah, even though they denied you there, you're saying, well, what, so, so when you're doing 2001, like, obviously, that's the space movie, that, so you're saying when you're doing the space movie, they, they contacted you then? I mean, is there, obviously there's a relationship between that? Yes, that's right. Okay, so what happened? Uh, um, and they were planning this, this fake moon landing, they wanted But why did they have to fake it? Why? Because it is impossible to get to the moon. It's if we ask any scientist, okay. we couldn't do it. Okay. There's the Van Allen belt, which is, it's impossible to get past. Okay. Uh, if you think of, how, of our space program and how many trips we have made since the alleged moon landing. Right. It is, they stopped in 1972. What, what sense does that even make? That if, if we went there, what, three or four times? between 69 and 72, mm -hmm. and haven't gone since, nor has anyone else, not even the Russians. It just, it's a little bit of a stretch of the imagination to think that we we did, you know, why would we not go? Or, because or no it's other impossible, country. Because it's impossible to go. Uh, we the, the furthest anyone has ever been off this planet is about 400 miles. Wow. The moon is what? Several hundred, It's a quarter, a quarter million? Yes miles away. It's just not possible. It wasn't possible in 1969, and it's not possible now. Oh, okay, wait, so you say, we, you say we can't go to the moon. Oh, I mean, what are the reasons? Are there some, like, facts? You want reasons? I'll give you reasons. Yeah, you, How much time do you have? Uh, and he was already drinking, so I decided to join him. I don't remember what I had, because I drink almost anything. Um, he, ha he was drinking Dewar's, I think, which... I mean, if you're going to drink scotch, okay, but doers, I don't know. Anyway, uh, he complimented me on 2001, and then he said, speaking of space, uh, you know about uh, President Kennedy's prediction of going to the moon by the end of the decade. Well, it's almost like a mandate. Like, he's sort yes. of like, you know, threw the gauntlet down. And he said, well, time is running out, and we want to do that, but we can't. It's impossible. We tried, 
uh, we've been testing this for years. As you may have heard, uh, uh, there was a, a launch pad accident in, in 1967 in which uh, the famous Gus Grissom was killed and two other astronauts. Uh, Gus was a good guy, but anyway. Uh, and it can't be done. We, we, we've talked to every scientist imaginable. It just cannot be done. But after seeing your film, I am convinced, and the gentlemen at NASA are also convinced, that you can help us make people believe that we have been to the moon and back. And you must have been startled at that moment. Okay. Actually, a little bit, but I also knew where this was going, and I thought, what a trick. What a trick this is for me, as an artist. Okay, you're still young and wide-eyed. I couldn't and... help it. Okay. It's part of being, it's like the, uh, it, it's the DNA or something of an artist. Like your adrenaline got going. Yes. The juice is fun. Okay. Yeah. Go on. And I was excited. All right, he didn't on. have to finish, but he did. Uh, and explained to me that he wanted me to uh, film fake, a fake landing with fake astronauts, well not real, real astronauts, but fake, uh, uh, faking the exploration of space. Be because they just knew they couldn't get there. Because there was just no way we could get there. And the political, I mean they'd spent all that money I guess. And yes. They, there was a political brinksmanship going yeah, on. Of course, of course Nixon wanted to uh, make a big splash. It was early in his presidency. Yeah, and, that would have made him look really he, like a failure. He, yeah, he wanted to, uh, okay. yeah, he wanted his uh, approval points up. And he thought nothing could do it better than this. To fulfill this dream that America has had as a country since uh, the Kennedy years. Okay, so you're saying the motivation was PR. PR, absolutely. Plain and simple, okay. PR. All right, and the geopolitical chess match between Russia that was going on, it would have weakened yes. their position, so to speak. Yes. Um, and, uh, and I guess that money. Was background. That was great background for the story. Yeah. There's also, it must have been about money. Because there was still a, 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 a red fear, a, you know, a, a communist fear among the people. Right, sure, that was right. You're kind of, yeah. yeah. Sure, I mean, missile crisis and all that, okay. But it's, it's also, also really about, like anything else, about money, I mean, they, they'd spent, well, they put in a billion, almost a trillion of our dollars now on this program. Yes, in addition so, to being impossible have... and, 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 and unsafe, it was also uh, terribly expensive. But no, what, no, no, what I'm saying is that it, it was so expensive that to fail would not, quote unquote, not be an option. In other words, at a certain point, you spend so much taxpayer money. I, I, I mean, my question I'm asking is, is Nixon motivated, whoever these men that decided this, this, this perfect this fraud, was it the money? In other words, if you, you can't go to the, can't, or maybe you can, I don't know. Can you go to the American people after spending a trillion dollars and say, we're going to do it for it? Finally, he said that uh, we can't tell people the truth, that we can't get to the moon. It would be disastrous for NASA. Uh, their, their funding would, would dry up. People wouldn't have faith in them anymore. They just... It would be like a, a, well, a wait, complete, in faith, it would be over, it would be right? It would be over. Yes, it would be absolutely over. So if we fake this, this moon landing, it would do nothing but increase the reputation. And we could go, we could go again and again if we had to. Uh, he, he, you know, looked at his drink kind of like this and said. Um, we're, we have to fake this. We have to fake this this moon landing, just to keep interest in NASA. And in the time, and, and in the next few years, we might actually be able to go for real. If we didn't fake this, if we didn't lie about it, eventually people would lose interest, and it, the funding would dry up for NASA. It would just cease to exist, and the, and the dream would be dead. It would be gone. The greatest thing in the world for this country would be to go to the moon and that being gone it would be just devastating for for uh, the, the national morale and it's about moon landing was not ambitious but uh, yeah I learned things making 
2001, which is why I got this gig in the first place, right? Right, right, that makes sense. So, so what was the but experience? It was, it was easy for me because, um, well, first of all, I didn't think a whole lot about the morality of it, as I said. If I had, I might have been uh, more uh, hesitant, more stifled in my work, but I didn't. And I, I could see that, that Neil was, actually, he was bothered by it. More than Buzz Aldrin or anyone else involved? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. About in what? a way, everything was going to center around him. He was the one who was supposed to come down off the ladder and announce the, the step for mankind and what have you. Uh, he sensed that this was going to be a life-changing experience for him. And I mean on a major scale. Uh, actually, he was, uh, he was rather tortured by it the rest of his life. Really? I mean, is that why you didn't have interviews? And, 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 and in, in fact, uh, that actually began to affect my own perception of it, watching what, what happened to him. Okay, in what way? Just seeing the deterioration of him? I mean, was he depressed? Or? He was depressed. He was uh, drinking heavily, um, bitter, scared, uh, just phobic, avoiding people. Uh, and that guy Bart Sibrell or something tried to get him to swear in a Bible. I mean, I mean, when I say it affected me, that's why there was so much time in between films for me. Between uh, uh, yeah, Full, you, Metal, Full Metal Jacket and, well, between uh, uh, The Shining and Full Metal Jacket was about six years. Between Full Metal Jacket and Eyes Wide Shut is 13 years. Yeah. And a lot of that time was spent just like just emotionally processing. Yes, yeah. it, it became very conflicting for me. I was proud of my work, but at the same time, and this was a lot due to a lot of because of Neil's influence. Not consciously, he didn't do this to me consciously, but I spent a lot of time with him, and each time I did, I became more and more bothered, troubled by my own participation in this. Okay. Well, what would he say? I mean, what, what would, did he explain the source of his depression? I mean, he was what? on the verge of tears. He did not cry. I won't say he cried, but he was on the verge of tears so many times because of what he did. I mean... What he participated in. It's almost as if he thought of the idea, you know? Right. He and felt he, like... He, he was almost used, really. Okay. But he's the one who felt the guilt. I'm sure NASA did not feel that much guilt. And, I mean, why did he go off, I wonder? I wonder why. Because they promised him a seat and that, in three years when they figured it out. They kept lying about it being possible. So why do you think he did it? Why did Armstrong do it in the first place? He, he thought, they kept saying, we'll be ready in three years and you'll go then. Just lie now and we'll go in three years. The funding will keep going and we'll, we'll figure this out and you'll go. Oh, actually. Right, yeah. And they, but they were lying, you know, and, and they figured it out. And he got really, you know, so cynical. Got, so, uh, so why did Armstrong go? I mean, he was such a moral principled man. If he, why would he go on a fake moon mission? I don't believe that. Well, they strung him along because they led him to believe, oh, don't worry, we're going to have the money in a few years and we'll actually go and then you will go. They'll have, you mean they'll have the technology in a few years? Yes. Okay. They will have enough, they will, yes, they will be able to uh, actually perform a miracle of going to the moon. And yes, he would be in the saddle. So in other words, okay, let's be clear. Kennedy set a deadline, psychological deadline of the 60s. They knew they couldn't beat it. Right. But they could have beat they did. Right, and if they did, you're saying they sincerely thought that they would really get there within a few years. I believe, yes, they did think so. Because that's what they, well, I mean, that's... Although some did there was a, a difference of opinion. There were some that just believed honestly that we will never be able to get to this. Just no chance. That were, and I used to like have coffee in the morning and be like, that, you know, there, I, there's no fucking way. Like, 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 like you know, even Werner von Braun. So go, you got that. Some people didn't believe that you could go. Either. Well, Werner von Braun, of course, didn't. Think Are, the, the director didn't think so. The man was just too brilliant. He knew that we couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, okay, I'm talking about a guy working for, on two lost causes, the Nazism and, and, and you know, the, the, the quest for the moon. I mean, he really, did, and he didn't tell them? I mean, did he ever tell them? Did he tell NASA? Like, did he tell the president that we can't go? I mean, I mean, he must have, he must have been broke the news. Well, he was very old, of course, at the time, and a lot of people just dismissed him. Younger, more ambitious people, some of them really thought we could get there. Right. Or wanted to believe it. Maybe on a conscious level they knew we couldn't, but they just wanted to believe the impossible because they were so full of themselves. And, and so, so full of the dream. dream. Yes. The dream the dream was very powerful. And that's what beguiled Armstrong. Here is a noble stand up guy and he didn't want to be part of the lie, but he he knew he'd get a seat if he played ball on when when they actually did go up. He was too good for this. But that day never came, obviously. That day never came. And what did that do to him? I mean it gradually destroyed him, I think. Okay. He deteriorated. Um, yeah, like I said, he, he, he drank a lot. He was full of self-recrimination. And so was I. Well, mainly from his influence. I, I almost, it's like, I, I caught him okay. from him. And now tell a story about, uh, I talked to him one last time before his death, and he made me promise to get this news out. It was too great. It was, you know, this yeah, one last story. He virtually begged me to uh, reveal all this. He couldn't do it himself. He, he has a pension to worry about. Uh, I had basically nothing to lose. I'm, you know, an established filmmaker, not involved with the government in any way except for this one job and I, I made my my millions I'm, I'm really basically set for life I'm almost 70. But you still must fear one thing they can do to you which is I mean I don't know do you ever I mean you, they are, you have, do you ever worry about them killing you because of the secret I mean you have become a bit of a recluse I don't know you know with the... Yeah um Garbo Howard Hughes and J.D. Salinger and me. Right. And to some degree, Neil. But, but did, did they, they, I mean, did any of them think that the government was out to get them? And I'm not saying you think that, do you? I mean, the government obviously said they'll kill you. I mean, obviously the government said we'll kill you if you say anything. I mean, that, that's a standard top secret sort of penalty. It's understood, even if it's not said. Right. But they did say it to you, I presume. Yeah. They, they, they did. I mean, the, yes, the government, they, 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 they said basically, so it they was. They tried to be cute about it, but yeah, it was said in no uncertain terms. So why are you, so this one just can't just get you killed? Well, that's why I'm uh, delaying it. Well, this is not going to be seen until... Oh, because of our... Years after my so day. now that's why I had to sign the NDA and all these, okay. That's right. All right, well, that makes sense now. Okay, I understand that now. All right. It should be known, but I want there to be some kind of cushion for my family. Uh, 15 years seems like a good number. Okay, all right. After my death, 15 years after my death. But, okay, so let's take a step back. You're making this tape out of an effect Neil had on you? I mean, Armstrong sort of influenced you? Very much. Um, sometimes it just takes a catalyst. I mean, you know, Somewhere inside you, you know what's right. Right. I mean, I, I went for years just thinking I was doing the right thing, just just through my art, you know? And then something comes along that uh, you don't even recognize as a temptation because you're so swept away by your own ego. Uh, it took someone like Neil Armstrong and distance and time to hammer into me what this really meant about society, about myself, about the human condition, and which is what I'm about. Uh, so it, you must feel very proud and very, 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 very guilty and proud of this thing. Yes, conflicted. I mean, I still think it's a terrible, maybe it's a terrible thing to say, maybe not, but I look at that or even think of it, I just remember it. And I think this was my fucking masterpiece. Yeah. I still think so. Right. I mean, it's the greatest. It's my flaws. It's my goddamn masterpiece. It's better than 2001. It's better than Paths of Glory or or Clockwork Orange or Barry Lyndon or Doctor Strangelove. 
and, and, all of which I love, but... And, and, and you're included, you know, that, that's the moon landing itself, and, that's, and what a triumphal story that is. Uh, were you involved in any of the other missions at all, or is that just the one? I mean, would they just take your thing, or did, was it a one-off, or did you get, did you do them all? I mean, you just did 11 and 13. They brought you back after 12 failed, okay? Just to, just to do 13, that's it. Um, and Neil helped you with that. So, so was it just a one-off? I mean, you just did, did you do them all? I did 11 and 13 as well. You did 13, okay. Not 12. Why, did, why is 13 a failure, then? Why is it you? Well, they brought me back. Then why, but why did you make it? 12 failed. You 12 failed how? Because 12 was a disaster. What do you mean, why? They, 72. Uh, By then, it was all passion. Most people just didn't care. That's why they had to play golf.